give me one second. Not one second. Um, And um, Judge, I would like to just call um, two witnesses. They'll be very brief. I'm not going to call Miss Lee. I think obviously it's clear what her position is. Well, what we were, okay. All right, that's fine. Go ahead. Who are you calling? I'm calling Jean Lee. Okay. He's there right now on the call. Well, I know all right. I mean, is just like you said, you know what the other position is going to be. I kind of suspect I know what their position is going to be. They're right. Everybody is going to have their own witnesses supporting each other's positions. But I'll be happy to hear from him briefly. Uh, well, Your Honor, I well, I understand that. I think he can. He was there during the affidavit signing, and I think he's to test. He's going to okay. testify. If you don't need to hear from a judge, then no, that's, that's fine. No, that's fine. I'll be happy to hear from him. Mr. Lee, raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? I do. Please put your hand down. Are you currently married to Miss Lee? Yes, I am. Do you currently reside in the same home? Yes, I do. And I'm going to draw your attention to the events that occurred on uh, March 25th. Were you around for those events? Yes, I was. Can you walk me through the day, that morning, what you guys did? Oh, uh, sure. So uh, that morning, um, my daughter Ellis had a um, lacrosse game at St. Pius, which she plays for the uh, junior team or whatever it is. Um, and at the time, so I drove her over there. I think her game was supposed to be at 10, 15, but it didn't start till, gosh, at least after 11, because I was talking to a friend of mine from high school who actually ironically has a daughter on the team. Um, at that time, Kelly and her daughter Ansley showed up at the game, um, and they watched the game with us. I think the game ended around 1230-ish, um, and then we got in the car and headed back to the house. Um, she, she and Ansley got in the car, and then Ellis and I got in another car because we had left earlier and went back to the house. And then at the point you got back to the house, when did... The conversation begin about these affidavits of election. As far as my conversations with them, or as far as any conversations, how did it begin? Did did Miss? Oh, okay. So, so we got them? yeah. Go no, so we so we got back to the house. I guess it was around, I'd say close to one thirty. Um, and then when we got back to the house, we were. Uh, sitting down you know i was talking with ellis i talked to ansley i talked to henry for a little bit um everybody was in you know good spirits having a good time we were talking about what we were going to do that evening um and then i guess it was about probably i don't even know maybe an hour later um kelly talked to henry and ansley privately for a few minutes and then she said they were going out for a few minutes. Um, they had to get something signed or something. I said, that's fine. Um, and then I told Kelly that we were that I was going to go ahead and take Ellis. She wanted to go get her nails done. And then her appointment was at 4 o'clock. So by the time we were leaving, they were walking in the house. Um, so, you know, that was about it. And then we came home and had dinner and they went and did their thing. And Kelly and I did our thing. At any point during that time, did you hear Miss Lee say that they are not allowed to leave until they signed the paper? No, I mean, Henry was in his room and Ansley was uh, out in the sunroom sitting there watching a movie. She was sitting with Ellis for a little while. Um, so, no, they were they were just everybody was casual. I think Kelly was laying down uh, actually upstairs in our bedroom for a little bit. And. Did you ever see Kelly place the children in a room and not allow them to leave the room? No. And then did the kids participate in any activity? It was a Saturday, is that right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And did the kids then go on to their activities? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, they're, you know, when they're home on the weekends with us, they're always either in the house or going having sleepovers at other friends. It seems like more times than, than not they're over at our house, but um judging by the amount of snacks and sodas and stuff we go through um but 
yeah, they, they all had their activities. And did they ever voice to you that they felt compelled or under distress because they had to sign these papers? No, they were, I mean, everybody was in really good spirits all day. I mean, I, I'm, you know, I think everybody was just having a good time and, um, you know, they, they, I didn't even know really what all was transpiring until I think it was after they went and had the stuff signed or whatever, because again, it was just, everything was kind of flowing around our house like normal. And since that date, um, the kids have been at your home, correct? Yes. Have they s expressed any distress or um, issues with mom because of this that you've noticed? Not at all. I mean, honestly, um, you know, I mean, Ansley tends to be a little quiet sometimes, but I mean, Ellis says the same thing and they're sisters. So go figure. They're just teenagers. Uh, Henry kind of keeps to himself sometimes just playing games with his friends, but everybody, you know, we have dinners and everything's fine. And how long have you been married to Miss Lee? Almost five years. God, that's weird to say. And then would it be fair to say that you've spent half during that five-year period, half that time with Ansley. Oh, absolutely. Obviously, Henry and Bradley, too, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And since Ansley's been attending counseling with uh, Wendy Fritz, do you see an improvement? My honest opinion? No, I don't. In fact... <laughs> I will tell you without getting too elaborating, I'm I'm personally concerned about Ansley for my own reasons, uh, and so is her sister. Um, she has been very concerned about her. Concerned about what specifically? Mostly the her her physical appearance and her overall weight. Um, as as recently as last Friday, Ellis pulled me aside when we were ride, driving home in the car and whispered in my ear and said, "Please okay, make sure she." Sustain the objection. You can't testify as to what Ellis told you. Oh, okay. Sorry. My That's apologies. Um, but yes, I'm, I've been very concerned. Um, I, I, I've seen a Wait, tremendous tell physical... Me about this pe Sorry to cut you off. You said you went to dinner with her. To tell me what happened at that dinner that was concerning. Um, well, we, we sat down. It was Ellis and I and Ansley and then... Um, uh, Kelly came and met us, I don't know, right after we pulled in at uh, Pizza Cafe in Avondale. So I ordered what I tend to like to eat, which is the, uh, whatever they are, the pretzels, mozzarella pretzels. Um, and got those, got an order of four, because figured there were four of us. Uh, Ellis ate one, Kelly ate part of one, I ate one, and then Ansley had about a bite and then put it back. And I asked her, you know, if it tasted fine. She's like, it's fine. Objection, here's her. Okay, you can only testify about what you observe, not what they told you. He took a bite, put okay. it back, and did she order anything else? Yes, she ordered a calzone. Did she eat it? No, I put the entire thing in the box and took it home. Is Have you seen other times recently where similar behavior where she either orders something and doesn't eat or... Is it eating at home during meals? Multiple times. But I, I mean, it's eating out. It, it doesn't really matter what the food is. It's more, she just doesn't eat. And and I'm not, you know, I, I'm not saying that everybody's not a little different in the way that they eat, but not eating is different. Okay. Um, and that's concerning to me. All right. I have no further questions, Judge. Okay. Cross. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Lee, good afternoon. I'm Patricia Shoemaker. Yes, how are you? Good. Mr. Lee, do you recall an incident that occurred at your house on February 1st of 2023? Yes, I do. Miss Lee was drinking and there was an altercation? Uh, there was a verbal altercation, yes. And the police arrived at your house? Yes. And you, do you recall you told the police that Kelly, your wife, chased your daughter around the house and then into the bathroom, and she struck her using her two open palms to the top of the chest area. Do you recall telling them? No, I did not say that. Okay, nope. so, so then the police are lying in their police report. 
their report was actually overstated, yes. Um, and then on February 8th, you recanted that statement, did you not? I went back and I changed it once I saw what the statement was because that's not what I told them. You've been married to Miss Lee for five years, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. She's very persuasive, isn't she? Isn't she? Uh, I'm not sure what that means. I mean, as far as, I guess, I guess, I, I don't know. I mean, you were, you not were, sure how to... You were aware that there was an emergency hearing filed after Miss Lee was arrested. Sorry, objection. What's calls, the objection? Calls for speculation. And truthfully, this is all goes beyond the scope of direct, but I'll I'm not going to be a pain in the butt and object over everything. But I don't think you're limited anymore to the what's been raised on direct. You can you got a thorough and sifting cross. Thank you, Your Honor. So, all right, go ahead. But <laughs> with, that be, with that being said, we don't need to be here all day for this. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Lee, you say that you're concerned about Ansley's weight. Have you seen her weight charts at the pediatrician? Yes, I have not seen them, no. So then you are not aware that actually at her last checkup, she went up in her weight. I can't honestly say you know with with any certainty i can only tell you what i see and i can only tell you what i've observed over the past couple of years no further questions your honor okay um any redirect no okay no, your honor. any any other witnesses i uh, just one more um miss belmonte who's in the waiting room i believe okay She should be joining us in a moment. Can you spell just, the name of your witness, um, Jennifer? Yes, it's Susan and then B-E-L-M-O-N-T-E. Yeah. All right, let's, um, she needs to unmute. Oh, did we swear in Mr. Lee? We did, I did. Okay, uh, good. All right, let's swear in Ms. Belmont. Yes. Ms. Belmont, can you raise your right hand, please? Where to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? I do. Okay. Uh, you can put your hand down. Uh, how do you know the parties? Um, I know uh, Kelly and Neil because my daughter, Sophia Arnold, and their son, Henry Hightower, were boyfriend and girlfriend for most of eighth grade and until last Friday. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and um, you're aware that there's a guardian ad litem appointed in this case? Yes. Have you ever spoken with her? No. And have you had occasion to be in the presence of Miss Lee and her children and your children? Together? Yes. Ye yes, I have. Um, to what extent? Um, when Sophia and Henry were together, she was frequently at their house and I would go to pick her up and often just hang around and stay. We had Thanksgiving dinner with their family at Kelly and Jean's house. And we also, my husband and I uh, were present at the dinner and we also went to their lake house in January and all three children were present at that weekend, as well as Ella's, uh, Kelly's stepdaughter. And where are you currently employed? I am employed at Georgia Tech. What's your title? I'm the assistant director of pre-graduate advising, and I am also a pre-teaching advisor. Are you considered a mandatory reporter? I am. I'm also a certified K-12 through teacher, and I'm still currently licensed. So if you were to witness anything um, endangering the children that would require reporting, you would be required to do so? Yes. And am I fair to presume that you've never done that? I've never done that, no. And when you were at the lake house, were you there for more than 24 hours? Yes, we were there for, let's see, Saturday, Sunday, about 36 
36 to 40. I don't exactly remember. I think we arrived on Friday. We arrived on Saturday and left on Monday morning. So did you see it's closer to 48? Sorry to cut you off. Did, did you see any signs of distress of the children? Distress and and any kind of emotional, physical distress? Correct. Is that what, um, not really. Not really. I mean, not really in the sense that um, with that's the first time I spent that much time with the whole family and um, they're teenagers. So some of the some of the things I saw having a teenage daughter just seemed normal teenagery stuff like they spent most of their time together. They didn't really hang out with us. We did go to an animal farm with Henry and Sophia for Sophia's birthday. And Ella, um, Ansley was with us as well. And I didn't see anything that would have made me feel that something was amiss. I didn't Did see Bradley. He spent most of the time up in his room. He came down to eat and then he went back up. So I didn't spend any time with Bradley. Okay. And have you ever had your daughter spend time with Miss, Hi with Miss Lee? Uh, alone? Or yes. just in general. Yes, several times um, Sophia wanted to go to every football game to watch Henry. And there were times when I could not drive her and Kelly would take her there. Um, she took her to Gainesville. She would pick her, take her home from the games with Henry. So she spent, there were several moments, times when she was with her by herself. And have you ever felt that it was unsafe for your daughter to be with this family? No. I would not have let her spend any time with Kelly or Neil um, <laughs> if I had any sense that she was in danger. So. Thank you so much. I have no further questions. Okay. Do you have any questions, Cross? No, Your Honor. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Um, any other evidence or witnesses, Ms. Mm -hmm. Yoxel? No. Okay. No, Your Honor. Just what's in my motion. Okay, and I reviewed everything in the text messages and and all that. Um, I ha actually, I have one question for dad. I would like to ask if we could swear him in. Dad, can you unmute? Raise your right hand. You tell me swear from the testimony you will give the court with the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you God. I do. <clears throat> when Ansley is with you during your parenting time, have you, um, what have you observed with respect to her eating habits? Does she eat? Does she not eat? Does she, what, what does she do with that? She, she does eat. In fact, every morning we get up and make breakfast, just her and I, while the boys are downstairs doing whatever they do. And so we have that every morning. She packs her lunch. I see what she brings in there. And then she usually helps me plan out dinner. That's her first question when she gets to home, what's for dinner? Um, so yeah, she's at, not only does she eat, she's actively involved in the in the making of the food and the she goes shopping with me. We go to the grocery store and what have you. Okay. Um, so you haven't noticed her skipping meals or picking at food or hiding food or anything like that? Nothing like that, but I think it's important to understand that during COVID, her weight went way up and she was very self-conscious about that. And I've noticed her try to make more and more healthy, conscious decisions about she's eating more fruit, she's eating more vegetables, she's watching, you know, more of the junk food. And so in a period of a year or two, her weight did come back down. She's in a normal range right now. I believe she's at 80%, but she went up over 95th percent during COVID. She came back down to where she's been since she was a little girl. I just feel like all of this is being, it's, it's, a, it's a bait and switch. You know, it's, it's let, let's put our attention on this instead of the real issues. All right. Well, I just wanted to see what you observed um, as far as her eating habits when she was with you. All right. Do you have any questions for him, Ms. Yoxel? Uh, not at this time. Okay. Ms. Shoemaker? No, you are. All right. Um, and when is Bradley's graduation from high school? Is that coming up in May? Okay. Yes, and and right. Bradley, Bradley gets 15 tickets and I know the parties have been discussing, you know, who gets, you know, how to disperse the 15 tickets among, you know, immediate family, extended family and so on and so forth. Oh, and I, I don't there, better not, there better not be a situation where either party, either parent is 
not allowed to go told that that isn't going to fly. So you are not from our side. Absolutely not. All right. Anything else? I mean, I think you all have kind of made your arguments already, so I, I don't think I need to hear an initial argument. Um, all right, a couple, here, here are my concerns. One, um, and Ms. Shoemaker, I'm going to ask you to prepare the order. Um, yes, Your Honor. Mom was kind of put on notice about my concerns at our last hearing and um, doesn't seem to have been acting in such a way um, as I would have expected, knowing that a judge was telling me to, you know, here's your warning kind of thing. You better watch out and act appropriately. Um, so that causes me great concern. Um, the letter from the nurse practitioner, the pediatrician, I mean, that had to have been initiated by mom. Um, and that's just a little odd to me. Um, I understand that both sides, you know, counsel for both sides believe in their client and argue for their client and all that, but, and, and that's why we have a guardian. And um, I understand, you know, Ms. Yoxel, you and your client are concerned about Ms. Taylor, but bottom line is the guardian has to make, has to form an opinion at some point in time has to make a decision and has to make recommendations. That's part of their job. And they're not always going to go along with, I mean, there isn't always a happy medium. Um, there's, there's a choice between one side or the other. And given what the children have represented to the guardian, how, you know, Henry in particular, um, I, I, I'm concerned about their well-being and I'm concerned about the conditions under which the children signed these affidavits of election, these recent ones. So I'm going to, um, I do find there's an emergency and I'm going to suspend mom's visitation and pending the psychological evaluation and treatment. Mom can continue to have phone and video and text conversations with their children. Um, and I will give dad final decision-making authority on medical decisions. So there's medication for children should never be conditioned upon one parent bringing the other parent to the other parent's house. I mean, that's just, that can't happen. That's certainly not in the best interest of the children. Um, now, Miss Taylor, how do the, the psych evals, how does that usually work? Do you submit three names and I pick one? Um, I, I don't want mom submitting a name and I don't want dad submitting a name. So. Um, yes, I am happy to do that. Um, I mean, I know that there are two people I regularly use and I'm happy to consider if counsel wants to email me who they would prefer. I'm happy to vet that. I could even reach out to Dr. Levitt if we wanted even her to pick. Um, maybe okay. that would be appropriate. Um, Dr. Levitt is... Carolyn Levitt was the parenting coordinator. Okay. I mean, I'd be fine with Dr. Davis picking. Those are all elite provider. So I don't, you know, I don't care. Um, who are the, who are the ones that you usually use? We use Dr. Oppenheimer, who is the best that, of the best. Okay. I mean, that, that is a name that is familiar to me. Yeah. And she's so. current. I just, we just um, hired her on a case. Um, yes. Two days ago, three days ago, I did on a custodial evaluation. But so what I can say about Dr. Oppenheimer, she had some surgery. She was not taking clients for a while. She is currently taking clients. However, um, she had to book us for the custody evaluation. It was, takes about eight appointments. We're booked already, not until um, right after the Family Law Institute, and we're booked through mid-June. So I hate to, I mean, I don't most, want to put it off. Right. That's my only that. issue with her. Okay. That I would, it. Yeah. I, I was just going to say, if, if 
if maybe Miss Shoemaker and I can submit a couple of names to Miss Taylor and then kind of okay. go from there. That would be fine. If you guys can agree Thanks. to a name, I'm fine with it. I would like to do someone that nobody's affiliated with, not Davis, not let like someone a fresh that can just really come in there and just do what they need to do, in my opinion, to make sure it's fair. I'm, I'm fine, fine with that. I'm fine with that problem. too. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right, Ms. Shoemaker, will you please submit the order? Of course, copy Ms. Yoxel and Ms. Taylor on it. Yes, Your yes. Honor. This time, Ms. Shoemaker, if you wouldn't mind sending it to me first to review before yes. sending it to the court. Yes. Okay. All right. And please know, I, I, this does not give me any pleasure in doing this. This is, this is my absolute least favorite part of my job. I hate it. Um, I, I, I absolutely hate it. Um, I'm sorry, but I, I am going to speak at this point. No, you're, no, you're not. You're not. You're <laughs> not going to speak. You're not going to speak or I will have to remove you. You have an attorney. What, so, what I like to ask judges of some parameters. So my client will seek the psych eval, but when will she be able to be permitted to have visitation? Because again, like I said, there's so many events happening in the next few weeks that she's either already a part of or going to miss. Well, I'm, I'm fine with her obviously going to graduation. I, you know, if she's in public with them, I think that's okay. I could live with that, but I don't want her, I don't want the kids to be put in a position where there's potential for guilt tripping or um, pressure or anything like that. So I can amend that actually, if you'd like, if it's a public setting or a large family setting, I'm okay with that. It's not like I don't want her to see her kids. I just don't want them to be in a situation where um, they could potentially be pressured. Uh, Ms. Taylor, would, are you okay with that caveat? I am. I, it's, it's that one-on-one -on -one situation that concerns me. All right, so let's change it. It's the one-on-one. -on -one, um, well, I mean, what in the home is what I'm saying. In the, in the home, yes. Yes, so no overnights at mom's home, but... Um, yeah, I agree. What about, well, let me ask you this. What about if, if mom and Jean want to go out for dinner with the kids one night a week or something? I mean, I don't want mom to not be seeing her kids. I just don't want there to be that alone pressure um potential okay with that i don't want them to stop seeing her either and i want right. i mean the sooner the psych eval and treatment starts the better okay i guess that, that that's i guess my next question i'm sorry i just I, you know so hard to get hearings um when well, we're, we're pretty good about working people in I, so <laughs> well i don't i think my request to get my client back to getting visitation is not an emergency so no i don't i i disagree with that if a mom hasn't been around her child for a period of time and if she complies with everything i tell her to do and now is in a position to get the child back i see that as an emergency i try to think of these things that if it were my kids you know how how would i feel so and I'll, i agree with that your honor i will be the first to bring it back i want her in treatment i want the treatment providers to get to talk to everyone that you know she you know that can and let's get get started on you know healthy so the sooner the better and i'm fine with mom having you know going out somewhere with the kids for dinner with her husband or with kids friends or neighbors um family events are fine graduation is fine it's just the no overnight visits at mom's house and um no staying yeah just no staying over for the time being but mom okay, still I, we need because these parties don't ever agree on anything right. and that today is friday we need specifics so can it be every wednesday night that they can have sure. dinner with mom Let's sure. Face. Is it Wednesday night? Oh, that's the therapy day. That's the therapy day. So let's pick a different night. Tuesday night. Tuesday night any night. Any Just night. I, I don't care what night it is. Sure. It's not in the order. I, 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 I yeah, it's a very good point, Miss Yoxel. I agree. Your Honor, I would just ask that um any a public visitation um for that purpose is good and and family um uh, public family events. 
Um, if the grandparents, you know, um, that's even better. Yeah. Are present. I just would say not, I, I don't want daytime visits at mom's home. I mean, you know what I'm saying? That's right. Well, the kids are, yeah, no, no, no. Public events, public, public dinner, large, large family gatherings are fine. Um, outside of mom's home. Outside of mom's home. Um, and I think it's a good, are her, are her mom's parents, do they live nearby or? That, that Mr. Lee's parents. So I think that's sort of. The, I don't know how that would work. Does, do they get along? I don't know if that's a good idea. But what about mom and Jean and Ellis? Yes. Mom They're and very Jean. close. Okay. So let's, I, I, I would be fine with that. Just let have um, mom and Jean and Ellis. Is there another, does he have another child, Jean? Just, Just Ellis. Ellis. All right. So that way she can see Ellis too. Um, so do dinners out every Tuesday night starting next Tuesday with mom, Jean and Ellis and dad can drop off or pick up or something along those lines um, so that does how Ansley's 14 does Henry drive Not no no yeah yeah okay Bradley drives but Bradley um, so drives. can we just say mom picks up at dad's house and brings back so that they're just going that's out fine. that's fine as long as as long as Jean is with her that's fine okay and then I'm I'm being a pain in the butt and I'm very sorry so Ellis only visits on the weekends that's her parenting time so could we coordinate a lunch or something during that weekend? Your Honor, this is the, the hope is that this is temporary and that we get this. Of course, idea but that. still, I still would like Ansley to be able to see her sister. So I'm fine with doing a weekend lunch in addition to Tuesday night. Not every, not every weekend, maybe once or twice. Well, a month. it wouldn't. She wouldn't be with She's Dad every, every weekend. Other. Every it would be every other weekend. Can we do every other Sunday aligning with Ellis's visit from um, twelve to two? Sure. 12 to 2 every other Sunday to align with Ellis's visit. And Your Honor, um, Ansley has ballet on Tuesday, so we could we make the Thursday. dinner. Do it um, Thursday. Or if they do it after, what time is her therapy appointment? Um, her therapy is uh, on Wednesdays at 6. Okay, that's going to interfere with dinner time. So what about yeah. Thursday? Do it on Thursdays. Thursday she has ballet, I think. Well, it's something's going to have to. Monday. Monday? Monday? Monday. Monday nights. Okay. Yeah. You know, and also, um, what about temporary child support for my client? There's no child support. And I wouldn't ask, but for the fact that Ms. Lee has not been contributing to uncovered medical expenses. Um, that's not true. That's not why we're here that's, today. And if this is supposed to be temporary, come on. Uh, I'm not. Hold on, Ms. Yoxel. I'm not going to grant any temporary child support at this point. Ms. Lee's going to have to pay for a psychological evaluation and any treatment, which is more, more important right now. Dad has the ability to take care of the children. So no to the temporary child support. And again, this is, this is going to be a very temporary situation, at which point I would consider it to be an emergency to get everything back on track once the evaluation and treatment are completed. Yes, sir. All right. Are there any other, and they're still free to text, FaceTime, all of that other stuff is fine. Daily. Okay. Thank you, Judge. I appreciate okay. all that. Okay. Thank and you, Judge. You're welcome. Anything else? And so it'll be um, obtain a forensic psyche eval and comply with all treatment. Any treatment that's recommended and then um, bring it back to me with the evaluation. Why don't you bring, after she has the, val the evaluation done or reported, bring it back to me um, so that I can see what, what the treatment, what it's looking like and what they say. And, and maybe we can address, maybe we can address it or make some tweaks to this before the treatment is completed. You know, I, I mean, she, in other words, if they say she's gonna need treatment for a long time, I don't wanna keep holding her. You know, so let's, after you get the evaluation back, just report back to Mohini, let us know what the status is. If, and um, obviously if, if 
if the parties could agree to if, if something you think needs to be changed and they can agree to it fine and if not we can reconvene at that time to see what if anything we can we can change I, the plan yeah. is not to keep mom from her children it's just to help calm things down right now um and to put them in a better position for going forward okay and, and so last request can we just say that uh, Ms. shoemaker and i need to submit names by monday just because i don't want sure. anyone i'm not saying she would delay no Ms. that's fine very that's fine. calm that's and fine. responsive but i just just to be on the safe side well and the other thing guys is you're gonna have to call these providers and see what their waiting list is because if you're if we're getting a good one they're gonna have a waiting list mm -hmm. so you just want to make sure you do that first which may take a how um, about let's do this um get it to me if you can by tuesday the end of the day tuesday that'll give you a little bit more time to try to reach some folks um and i'll try to sign it as soon as it comes in if you're or figure it out as soon as i get it and so judge um this is just because you know i've i've had this in my own cases um so um so she'll she'll immediately start complying with treatment of course we'll bring it back while that's happening like hopefully yeah you know, i don't want to wait till treatment is over to right. address this i think it will be ongoing and i know that yeah and so then my only thing would be that it get released to me and the court yes the um, HIPAA release yes yes out of the order too that's a good point i'm not going to share it with anyone else and I, that yeah i don't want i do not want the psych eval to go to dad I don't That's want right. that to be able to have that to use for any ammunition for anything. They don't. Yeah. What about what about counsel? Yeah, because if it's going to the court, I think I'm entitled to get a copy of it. I don't need a copy of it. I, I just, I, I just, I don't. <sighs> yeah. I mean, My, we, and I'm and I'm fine with there being language in the order that I can't you know, share it with dad. I mean, you're an officer of the court, so I would trust that you would abide, you would abide by the court order. So as long as there's language in there that both counsel will be apprised of the report, but the contents, photographs, copies, do, anything will not be shared um, with you, that. Or used in the trial. Or used, correct, correct or used by dad. If I, I mean, I can rely on the information. So I, I'm not gonna, I don't wanna carve me out from being able to use it. If there's something in right. there that I think is important, but she'll not be used by the opposing party um, for during the course of the litigation. And it, copies sh shall not be made or disseminated, standard kind of non-disclosure language, except that the court gets to rely on the information. Um, we'll obviously provide that to you directly okay. um, from me, but not to be filed, obviously. So, Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yep. I guess I have a question. If if opposing counsel can't use it, why and can't give it to dad? Why does opposing counsel need it? Well, if she's if it's going to the court, isn't aren't both sides entitled to the information? I mean, I don't think. Your, Your Honor, yes, I would agree with the court that if it's going to the court and the court is considering it and making its decisions, um, I am entitled to a copy. And frankly, I think, and, and I'm kind of sitting here thinking about, you know, what the court's language, what the court wants in the language of this order. But I also think that if, you know, let's say that it's something um, that I need to refute if we go to trial, I think that I and the court's going to consider it, I need to have well, the ability to include it. I think what you would need to do would be, um, I don't know, how would you, I, I, let me ask I, you this, Judge, if, if, if you are willing to, if, if your position is that you're going to agree with the guardian's request, if I entered into a consent order, uh -huh. like saying that my client will go ahead and do this, um, would that at that point would it then be something that could be re remain um, for, solely for the guardian unless she needed to disseminate it to the judge for some reason in the sense that either mom's not participating? Oh, um, I see. So in other words, send it 
So the proposal is, I'll give you a chance to respond, Ms. Shoemaker, is just release it to the guardian. If the guardian thinks it needs to be released to the court, then at that point it gets released to the attorneys and the court. Is that what you're suggesting, Ms. Shoemaker? Similar to like a deep fax, like in-camera inspection, like yeah. you're only going to show me it necessary. Um, Your Honor, and I would object. I mean, I would object to that, and I would think that both sides were because there might be stuff in the psychological evaluation. I mean, think if the psychological evaluation comes back and says, "Hey, look, mom has, is perfectly fine," then of course Miss Yoxel is going to want to use it. Whereas if there's issues with mom, and you know, let's say there's issues with mom, and the court is going to disregard it, then I have a right to refute that or even bring in my own expert. Well, why can't I do an ex parte review of this like I would for defects records? Um, Your Honor, yes, yes, but then, you know, if, if the court were to rely on any portion of the psychological evaluation, then I think that the court would be required to, at a minimum, release it to counsel, um, to the parties. Wait, the so, I don't disagree with that. I'm sorry, I'm interrupting you. That's no, I, you're fine. My opinion on that is I do very much want mom's information protected because I, I think both for the best interest of the children, um, because that is a huge thing in her head, which I absolutely understand. And I think for her to get treatment that she's willing to engage in, she needs to know that's private. Um, and so I would ask that I think it could be redacted by the court. I mean, a diagnosis, but without maybe all of the things that that you know like we would do for defects right and if we um you know for even the medical records you know we'll we'll take out and, and just put the diagnosis so i think that if we could do it to the court in camera um then you know have meet about it if necessary and or the court redact and only share the diagnosis and the required treatment i mean i think before on an ongoing basis, we're going to want her to keep in treatment even after this court is done. And therefore, there would have to be some transparency between the parties as to treatment. Like just, hey, doc, is she doing it kind of thing, not what's happening. That's my only suggestion. Hey, Yara, and maybe, and I'm going to kind of take a middle ground. And maybe, maybe what we do is we kind of kick the can down the road a little bit because if, if, you know, diagnosis is an expert opinion. And if that diagnosis is then later going to be used on it in court, and I bring in my own expert to refute that diagnosis, and this is just a hypothetical, I'm not saying it's going to happen. But if I were to bring in my own expert to refute that hypothetical, then I would be entitled under the evidence statute to the documents that that expert that issued that diagnosis relied upon to issue that opinion. Maybe what we do is we get it done, and at this point, it's just released to the court, and maybe we reserve that issue of releasability for a, for a later date. And maybe we kind of just get it done and then figure out how we deal with that later. Well, this is a big can to kick down the road. Um... Yeah, yeah, and I and I appreciate, and I appreciate. Um, mom's concerns about confidentiality, but I also have to represent my client. I understand, but if, I don't know, um, I don't know if I can order it be ex parte. Uh, how the about a, a fair thing to do would make both parties go through a psych eval, then everyone has access to everyone's craziness, and then no one can complain. Uh, there's that. <laughs> um, maybe that's not a bad idea, actually. And then no restrictions on who can look at what. And then everybody feels like they got their fair shake in that. Patty, or I'm sorry, Miss Shoemaker. Yeah, I, I'm not necessarily objecting. Okay. Um, Great. Then let's well, do that. Let's do that. That seems to be the simplest, cleanest, easiest thing to do. Both sides will undergo their own psychiatric evaluation. Um, then, Your Honor, then then both psychological evaluations come back to the court and to counsel. Yep. yep. Um, I still I still believe that there should be you know certain the standard restrictions where you know 
the they don't need to be dis disseminated or disclosed outside. They don't need to be filed in the court, in the record. Standard non-disclosure language other than the attorneys, the guardian, and the court. I've, I've seen it um, said that counsel cannot provide a copy to their client. They can review it in the, the office only. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, and then I would go back to my earlier question about child support, since both parties now are paying for a psychological evaluation. I'm, I'm still not going to do child support right now. Let's see what happens with this and see where we give it. Let's give it a couple of months and see where we are. Um, and if we're, we're going to make any long term changes, we will address the issue of child support at that point. Your Honor, can you admonish mom to start paying for the therapy is my 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 request. That was in my pr prior order, correct? Yeah, she's been paying. She's going to pay for it. That's that's you fine. Know, but she hasn't yet. So she needs to do that ASAP. Okay. And, and also, then, oh, go ahead. Can we also agree that whatever ther um, sorry, whatever therapist we go with, or sorry, psychologist, that's the like it'll be for both of them. We're not going to do one for this one and one for that one, right. and then it becomes the variables. Right? I think it's very helpful and it would also help cut down costs because they're communicating the forensic stuff comes naturally. I have if you guys are in agreement with that, it's fine with me. But uh, yeah, I'm sorry, what was that last part? The she said the, it, it's easier and less expensive that way if they both use the same oh psychologist to do the psych about as okay. long as the psychologist doesn't think there's a conflict there's not, there's not. I, okay. not. Right. and, and right. I think that's better because the psychologist will administer the same test to both Perfect. parts your honor exactly. and and if the court's not going to you know give us child support and each party's splitting the cost of the psych about my client's bearing the sole cost of the guardian of item can we at least split that so he's I'm not well, no he's not he has a higher percentage he makes a lot more money my client hasn't been employed for several years and now she's back this week Thank goodness, working. Um, so I, will, I mean, again, this is not. I, I'm. I don't want to. Was there a request for child support in the emergency? There was. That was a separate. That hasn't been raised because the mo the guardian filed the motion. So let's. I, I would prefer to not address child support today. Let's wait. I don't think this is going to be really long. Let's wait a couple months and see where we are, and then we can. Once we have the information from the report, we can evaluate it. And we can address child support at that time. Now, there's one other issue. Ms. Yoxley, your client is putting messages in chats, um, I, taking well, Mother's Day from me. So let's make it, okay, let's make it um, put in the order. Mother's, that's a good point she raised, that she be able to do something with the entire family, not just like out for lunch, something together as a family. Same restrictions in place, but she will have Mother's Day. Thank you, Judge. And um, there's money out on both sides. I'm not going into it. We'll deal that deal with that another day. I'm going to send Ms. Shoemaker. She's asked me several times, in all her fairness, for me to get her the specifics, and I'll get her that hopefully next week. But we'll deal with all of the money stuff. But I will make sure my client pays what she needs to pay for the therapy. Thank you. Can we ask that neither party shall discuss um, with this with the children? Yes. That should be without, I shouldn't have to say that. I know. But if it's in all if, the orders, it's in all the orders, but we'll you know. put it in this one too. Thank you. Just as a, a current and present reminder. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Anything else? I have nothing else. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank um, you for accommodating us, Judge. Thank you, Judge. All right. Thanks. Have a good Thank evening. Have a good Please take weekend. care. All right. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Great weekend, everyone. Thank you.